Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft Supply. Let's make a gorgeous sleigh bell strap. Now, this is a simple strap. Doesn't look so, right? Looks pretty much better than just about everything I see out there. But here's the thing, very simple pattern. We can go a thousand ways with this design, but we're gonna keep this one simple. But right off the bat, here's two key points. Quality leather. This is our finished double shoulder in a bomber brown. Eight to nine ounce, beautiful rich color, very supple. It's got a good weight to it, good feel. Secondly, we are not using inexpensive craft store bells. In fact, we stock a full line of beautiful bells. Solid brass, multiple designs, multiple shapes, nickel, gorgeous nickel bells. But here's the thing, multiple sizes. We could take this pattern and actually do a tapered bell design on that. That would be gorgeous. All right, but next video. On this one, I'm rolling. Let's keep this one simple. So, how about let's clap more strap. Let's start our pattern. Now, super easy pattern. All kinds of ways you can go with this, but again, let's stay simple here. All right, two and a half inches by 24 inches. That's my main body panel. Then, then I've got a one inch by 11 and a one inch by eight. Now I've got a center line here. Save us a little time. I've drawn in my center line. Then I've got a line one quarter inch in from each edge. So let's start here. We need two rivet holes to secure our billet onto our main body. But I don't want that so close to the end that it stands, stands a chance of tearing. So let's bring that in. Let's come in three quarters of an inch. Make a mark. Nice. Now, one inch spread. It's not too far apart. It's not too bunched. So let's drop in one inch further. All right, there's our rivet holes on one end. Easy enough. Let's flip our strap pattern around. We're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other end, three quarter and one. Now, we need an English point, but I don't have a two and a half inch wide English point. In fact, I'm not even sure I've seen one. So let's do this, let's make a pattern for that. Now I'm gonna take a piece of heavier paper because I'll be able to use this time and again. Two and a half inches wide, got my center line, but I really went hard on that pen. Several passes because now it scores the, the paper and it makes an easy bend. All right, two and a half inch width. This is not a rule of thumb, but let's at least take a look at it. If I came down two and a half inches, that is gonna be one seriously deep point. I don't want that. Let's cut that in half. Let's come down one and a quarter inch. I'm simply gonna make a mark across my, my pattern or my template. Now, I'm gonna cut from my, from my fold out. And the reason I say that is because from time to time, it's easy enough to get confused and cut from the opposite side in. But what that does is makes this big V. It's a beautiful V, but that's it's not what I'm looking for. Now, we're gonna freehand this. You can certainly use a template or a French curve or even a, a lace spool, but let's just cut a nice even curve with my, with my knife. There we go, look at that. That looks great. Now let's just, let's trim a little bit of that. Keep that from being so, so pointed. Now we'll bring back our main pattern. Let's drop that on our end. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna draw this in on both ends and then cut my pattern. And my last cut, well that looks great. Trim just a little bit there. Nice, good looking pattern thus far. All right, let's get that out of our way. Now we need to measure for our bells and our spots. We're gonna put six bells on the strap, but there's a bit of a trick to this. What I need to do is take this distance, divide by seven and not six, thus giving me my end point. So let's do this. This should be 20 and a half inches. Well, that's exactly right. All right, that's gonna be confusing to divide by seven, but we've got an easy out there. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna move my pattern to where my straight edge starts one quarter outside of this rivet hole and ends one quarter outside of this hole, thus giving me 21 inches, much easier to divide by seven. That's gonna give us three. So let's do this. Right off the bat, we're gonna mark for our holes. So let's make a mark at three, six, nine, 12, 15, and 18. Now, that's gonna leave this two and three quarters where everything else is three inches. It's not gonna even be an issue. We'll never see that. But now we do need to measure for our, our spots that are gonna sit inside the bells. Now we only need five marks here. We're not gonna do anything outside of the bell, 
but since these are exactly three inches apart, I'm just going to make a mark right in the center, one and a half from either side. I'm simply going to make five marks. Now, let's do this. Before this gets confusing, let's circle our spots and write in spot. Now, we can write that on each one, but that's not terribly necessary because when we mark this, we'll have two different colors of markers running down the center line. We'll mark that bell. Well, that's easy enough. A very clean, very tight pattern. But now we need to measure for our spots. So let's do this. Let's come in here, square across the top, and I'm going to draw a line on one of my bell marks. Easy enough, and you'll see where we're going with this. Now I'm going to drop my straight edge right in here, and I'm going to, from that line, make a mark one inch increments all the way down both sides, same on the other side. And my last mark, easy enough. Now we'll come back here in a minute and we'll mark this with colored markers so we know what hole gets a punch and what hole gets a mark. All right, let's set that aside. Let's jump over to our tongue billet, which is this part. We've got our size holes on here. Well, it's easy enough. We've already got our measurements. We're gonna come in three quarters of an inch and we're gonna give that a one inch spread. So right there, three quarters and one. Well, there's our rivet holes easy enough. Now with this hole though, I don't want that hole so close that my buckle could hit the back side of that if we want to buckle that. So let's give that two inches and from there five holes one inch increments. Well that's an easy enough pattern to make. Let's circle those. We'll come back and mark these. Now on this end, I want an English point just like a belt strap. So let's draw that in. But on the other end, we're going to use a round end punch. So let's draw that in and then we'll punch these. We'll punch the pattern with the leather and that pattern will be set. All right, so tongue side, let's jump over to our buckle billet. Same thing, three quarters in and then one inch. Marked and circled. All right, now this is a little bit of a trick here. Again, I want this these two rivet holes far enough out to where these two pieces don't bump. Let's give that, just like the other pattern, let's give that two inches. Now we're going to use an oblong hole. That's our hole punch right here, allows that buckle bar to slip through. The rule of thumb is one inch, one inch wide strap, one inch oblong. I tend to add to that because if this buckle bar is a little too big going around, then, I, then it'll bind. So let's give that some extra room so that moves nicely. So let's do a one and a quarter inch oblong. Now, not a rule of thumb, but what I tend to do is take my oblong and double it. So one and a quarter, that's going to give me two and a half inches. But before we mark that, we're going to need a keeper here. This is a heel bar buckle. So we need a keeper. We're going to need a little extra room between this rivet and the one on the reverse side. So let's come out three inches. Easy enough. Now, we don't have to add this, but on the back side, it's a nice touch. I've got a round end punch. Very professional, very finished. So on this end, let's draw in that round end. Opposite end, it's going to be laying up on the main body. Let's drop in that round end. And then an oblong. This doesn't have to be perfect. We'll center this when we go to punch. But that alerts us to the fact that we have an oblong there. Now, very nice. Our pattern is all but ready to go. Now, let's do some pattern maintenance here, though. First off, we want to mark all of our punch holes in black because we'll mark our spot holes in red so we don't make a mistake and punch a hole where we simply need to mark a hole. There's our oblong, round in, round in, English point, round in, and then let's jump over to our main body. Rivet holes, we want to mark in black. Now, bell holes, black, because we are going to punch that. Now, rivet there, Just don't forget those guys. Let's drop that in, go over to red. Now, I'm going to mark my spot holes in red because I don't want to make the mistake of punching a hole here. If I do, spot's not going to sit in that hole which means we can't use that piece now. We'll have to remake it. 
I'm going to mark all the way down, all the way back, and we'll be ready to cut some leather. Now, one of the great things about this project, it's all strapping. It's all straight lines. So we're going to use a wooden strap cutter, and this is one of the best, most useful tools in my shop. Watch how easy this is. Now I'm going to set my crossbar two and a half inches, simply going to sink that in. Look at that, two and a half inches. Now, part of the trick here, I'm going to take this tab, I'm going to pull it just a little bit left. That's going to keep the straight edge butted against the tool. Well, how easy was that? Beautiful, right? Now, we need a one inch billet. So let's jump down. Let's drop this cross arm down to one inch. Tighten that, and I tend to put a little extra tight on that. Bring that in, look at that. Now I'm gonna pull that tab just a hair to the left. How easy. Very nice. All right, we've got a two and a half and one inch. So let's drop these down and mark our patterns. Now with my scribe, let's move that one inch out of the way. Let's take a simple scribe. What I'm going to do, mark in my English points, my rivet holes, and all of my spot marks, and then I will trim both ends. And my last cut. All right, so we've got our main body is ready to punch, and our two billets are ready to go as well. So I'm gonna bring out the marble, let's punch some holes, round end, English points, and an oblong. Now we could certainly use a revolving punch. I'm gonna jump over to a drive punch. All right, let's do these one at a time. Now, save us a little time. I've punched the ends of our pattern, so we'll add that on. First thing, rivet holes on the buckle billet. All four holes are rivet holes. I'm gonna use an eighth of an inch. Does not have to be spot on eighth of an inch. You can go a little bit higher. I just don't want my rivet swimming around in that hole. I want a good closure on that. Good, all right, now we need to drop in a one and a quarter inch oblong, one inch strap, but I tend to go just a little bit higher. There we go, clean and straight, just what we're looking for. Now let's jump over to our round end. Good and clean, now the one on the back side, not necessary, but certainly nice detail. Great, buckle billet, ready to go. Let's jump over to the tongue side. Now. <clears throat> Excuse me, again, eighth inch, give or take rivets to rivet that onto the main body. Now for our size holes, let's jump over to a little larger hole, say maybe a 3 16 Good, sharp punches. That's just right. There we go. Now, let's clean a little bit of that off. Let's jump over to a one inch English point. I'm going to drop that just about one and a half, maybe two inches out. Flip that around. We're going to go back to our round end, one inch round end. Looks good. All right, that piece ready to go. And now over to our main body. Rivet holes, two rivet holes each end to secure our billets. Those little guys are a constant headache. There we go. All right, so this is punched. Now we've got a little bit of a change up here because if we're using inexpensive bells and you can actually hear the difference, that is just an inexpensive bell as opposed to absolutely world of difference. But here's the thing. This has got a shank on it, absolute quality. So what we're gonna need to do is punch an oblong, a 5 8 inch or 3 quarter inch oblong hole. Now, if you don't have an oblong that small, easy enough. All I have to do, punch two holes with my revolving or my drive and just cut between them and I have an oblong. So, let's pick up, let's see, we've got a 5 8 inch here, that should be just right, but we need to pay attention. Let's don't punch a hole where we want a spot. Our spots are inside of our, hole, our, our bells. So let's do this, let's drop in oblongs Oh, 
that looks great. Just what we're looking for. All right, so let's take these pieces, jump over here, and we're gonna add some spots. Now, I love spots. I use them on almost every project because they're inexpensive, they look great, they're easy to set, and there are all manner of designs. In fact, we sell spots with decorative caps and they're gorgeous. We're simply gonna use quarter inch domed nickel so it matches the rest of our hardware. Now, best way to set these, equipment. We have what's called a little wonder, tabletop, and it will set spots, rivets, grommets, eyelets, perfect each time, every time. I don't have one. So let's step back down to a hand setter. All this is, we have our post, concaved in, and a throat. I'm gonna take a spot, load it into that throat. I can see my tine sticking out. Now, when I push this through this leather, I need somewhere for these tines to go. So I'm gonna put another piece of leather behind us, just a piece of scrap. Perfect, look at that, clean and flush. No tool marks, no ghosting. Well, it's stuck to my leather. That's exactly what I want. Now I can turn this over, drop this back, and reset that from the backside. To me, not preferable. What I wanna do is take my setter. I'm gonna bend those two tines inward. You can go out, but in seems to be the best. Now, I'm gonna hit this with my mallet. Not hard enough to ding, but hard enough to set those tines, but I need a little protection. Perfect, there we go. Look at that, I can't even feel those tines. They've actually curled back into the leather. That's not gonna snag or catch on anything just what I'm looking for. Now, second trick, I'm gonna load a spot. We're marked here on our pattern. So I'm gonna load a spot, and I'm gonna take the two tines, and I'm going to straddle my mark. Easy enough. Now I'll set this, but I do need my leather behind this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set my spots all the way down one side, all the way up the other. Then we're gonna jump over to our center spots, and we're gonna set these a little bit differently. And our last three spots looks great. Now, look at this. Look how clean our lines are, and we set that by hand. Very consistent because we took our time with our pattern, that's starting to pay off. But we've got a problem here. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Notice I've got, and I don't know the industry term there, but I've got a little ear on that. The tine has come out before going in. All right, here's how we correct that. I need to put about 70% of my pressure on the throat and about 30% here on the tool itself. What that's going to do is keep those tines straight down. It's not gonna give it the chance to come out and go down. Now, with, with spots, I can simply pop that out, set another one, will be totally unnoticeable. All right, now, let's jump over to a 3 8 inch. And we're gonna drop these in between the bells, but you can put just anything in between here, a stamp, say a concho, all kinds of options but let's keep this one simple. Now, we're gonna set these a little bit differently. I don't have the hand setter for the 3 8 So what I'm going to do, literally set these by hand. I've got a little pallet, it's just made out of cardboard taped together. My first step, I'm gonna take one of my spots, I'm gonna straddle my first mark. So now, I've got my tine marks on either side of my pattern mark. I'm gonna take my craft knife, on my pad, now we're gonna use this about three times through this process. I'm gonna take my pad, I'm simply going to press my craft knife through the leather. Make two slits there. I'm gonna take my spot, drop that in, and I don't even have to press. Look at that, right through. All right, let's put this back on our pad. Give it two easy taps, not enough to ding, but what that's done is that's driven those tines right through. That spot is very flat very flush. Now, just like the smaller spots, I'm gonna take my craft knife or my setter, bend my tines over, put this on my quartz, drop some padding on it, there we go. Easy enough. Again, I can feel those tines have actually sunk in, not gonna snag on anything. All right, so I'm gonna put in the other four spots, then we're gonna jump over there and lay some bells in. And our last two spots there looks good. Clean and straight, that is a beautiful strap. All right, next step, we're almost there. Let's set some bells. Now, this is just about the easiest part. Quality bell, again, easy to set. So all I need, piece of suede or latigo, 
I'm going to tie a knot one end, trim that off, and on the other end, let's just cut in a good long taper. Very nice. Now, take our first bell. I'm going to drop this in my oblong. Now, we're using a nice thick 8 to 9 ounce leather. So what I'll do is I'll take my awl and I'm just going to push that through from both from both sides. So all I have to do is take that taper, push that through. One bell is ready to go. Extremely strong, tight, and that is not going anywhere. The last bell laced in, a small knot at the end. Trim the excess there. There we go. Looks great. Very solid, very uniform. Now, last step is assembly. We're going to put our billets on, but before we do that, we need to make a keeper. This is a center bar buckle. Notice the bar is right across the center, makes its own keeper. Heel bar. Therefore, we're going to have to add a keeper. Now, we can always buy keepers and we sell a number of them, but to match the exact leather I'm using, I'm going to take this out of a piece of scrap. So what I've got is about a 3 8 inch getting maybe maybe a half inch, give or take, somewhere in there. But I've got it longer than I need. Well, okay, raises a question. How do we measure for this? Easy enough. I'm going to add one inch across the top, one inch across the back. So that's two inches. Now I want three quarters of an inch for my bend, both sides. So that gets us up to three and a half. We're going to set a rivet. We're going to overlap that, set a rivet, roughly maybe a quarter of an inch, so three and three quarter. But let's take this into account. This is a pretty thick leather. So what I want to do is add maybe a quarter inch. Let's call it an even four. But here's the thing. I don't want to use this full thickness. If I added a keeper on like that, that's going to look ridiculous. It's enormous. So what we're going to do is let's skive this down. Now I need four inches. So I've got a piece a lot longer than I need. So I have something to hold on to. Hand skiver. Got a blade right across the back. I'm just going to sink that in my leather and run that across the back of the strap. There we go. Thin my leather down, nice and consistent. All right, we're going to cut this to four, jump over here, and we're going to set some rivets. Now, setting our keeper, we're going to be using double cap rivets. These are my absolute favorite. Cap on the back, so very finished on the back side, but the great thing about this is the post is crimped. So I can snap a cap down on there without setting it. Therefore, I can work around my table without rivets falling out and rolling around. That's very frustrating. So we're going to go with a small for our keeper since we skive this down. So I'm going to come from the back side. I'm going to use this. This is our anvil for setting our snaps. I'm going to drop that in, bring the other piece around, and a cap. And let's get that. There we go. All right. So let's set that. And we have a keeper. Easy enough. Let's move to our next piece, our buckle billet. Now I'm going to take a buckle, drop that in, slide my keeper on. Now I want my keeper inside of my rivet holes so it stays right where I want it. I'm going to use a medium rivet. Now because we took, again, our time on our pattern, look at that. Fits nicely. Now it would be hard to set this rivet like this because I've got a piece of leather under there. So let's move this billet over to the edge. That's going to allow that curve to hang off of the edge of my table. Therefore, when I drop in my, my rivet, I get a very clean set. Looks good. All right, we are close. Now, either end is fine here. So I'm going to drop in two medium double caps. I'm going to drop my billet over that. Again, look at our holes. They just fit nicely. And I'm just dropping rivets everywhere, but that's part of it. All right, nice. That's ready to go. Doesn't that look good? This is a beautiful project. Now our tongue side. We don't need any assembly there, so let's drop in our rivets. Drop the billet on. Two caps. Our setter. And our project is complete. Well, yet again, another project. I could not be happier with the outcome. Simple, yes, but gorgeous. Quality leather, quality tools, and quality hardware. That's what we're about at Weaver. Now, pattern's good also. So I can take that, I can transfer that over to our plastic sheeting. Makes a great pattern. But here's the great thing. 
basic sleigh bell strap. Sky is the limit on decorations. Take that ball and run with it. Good luck with your projects. <music>